In 2025, an object nearly twice the width of Manhattan barreled in from interstellar space, skimmed the sun on the far side from Earth, and, you know, left almost no comet tail. At Harvard, one astrophysicist looked at the numbers, looked at the data, and said, that is not a comet, that could be a probe. Today, we follow the data, we follow the evidence, that splits the world of astronomy in two. Right, so on 30 January 2025, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, ATLAS, spotted something no human had ever seen before. It was a 5 to 20 kilometer body on an open orbit, which means, you know, it came from and will return to the vast space between the stars. Within hours, the Minor Planet Center, they tagged it 3i Atlas. This was uh, only the third interstellar visitor ever confirmed, which, you know, makes it quite a rare event. Immediately, telescopes on every continent swung toward it. JPL's radar chirped, ESA's cameras rolled, and on Twitter, the hashtag 3i Atlas, you know, it shot to number one worldwide. Now, astronomers, they expected a bright coma and twin tails, that's classic comet behavior when frozen volatiles meet sunlight. But instead, they saw a ghost, really. A dim, nearly tailless smudge drifting almost perfectly along the plane of the planets. It was quite puzzling. The internet, as the internet does, you know, it produced alien memes by supper time. But in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the question was asked with tenure-board seriousness and with an open mind. What if the memes, you know, what if they are right? Let's run the weirdness checklist, shall we? You know, let's look at the evidence like a detective story. 1. Orbital alignment. This object, 3i Atlas, it sneaks within 5 degrees of the ecliptic. That's the thin disk where every major planet lives. Now, random interstellar rocks, they should appear from any angle, really. The odds of such a precise alignment, you know, are roughly 1 in 100. And if you consider the chance for that happening at random for objects like this, it can be even as low as 1 in 500, which is uh, very unlikely. 2. Direction. It's retrograde, meaning it's orbiting the sun the wrong way, against the flow of everything else in our solar system. Yet, it's still threading close encounters with Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. These are gravitational slingshots that look eerily like the trajectory NASA designs for its fastest probes, you know, like the Voyagers or New Horizons. That's not what you expect from a random rock. 3. Size. At the upper estimate, 3i Atlas is four times the diameter of Oumuamua and 30 times the volume of Comet Borisov. You know, the object was relatively big, possibly tens of kilometers, the size of Manhattan Island. And uh, if that's the case, it was a million times more massive than the previous objects from outside the solar system. And that was puzzling. Statistically, big things should be rare. So to have three giants like this in just three years, that's, you know, quite remarkable. Four, lack of outgassing. Spectra show only a wisp of dust, really. We see no carbon monoxide, no water lines, nothing that screams icy body. And, you know, we would have expected it to be rich in water, but water makes only 4% of that cloud of gas. It's mostly carbon dioxide, based on data from the Webb telescope. And the other thing is, we see this glow of light, but usually around comets, the glow is produced by dust, and the dust scatters sunlight, and then the dust is pushed back by sunlight, and that's why we see a cometary tail trailing behind comets. In this case, the glow is in front of the object toward the sun, and it's not really clear why. And why is it 10 times longer than it is wide? One possibility is that instead of dust, what we are seeing is scattering of sunlight by ice, by fragments of ice, that gets evaporated, but it's not at all clear. And the other thing is, there's nickel, without iron in it. And the only way that nickel is produced without iron is in the industry when we make nickel alloys. Yet an unseen hand appears to give it an extra kick, tiny but above measurement noise. You put all those together, all this evidence, and you get the astronomical equivalent of a locked room mystery. A silent object moving faster than gravity alone allows, leaving almost no exhaust and showing some very unusual chemical signatures. Before we grab the alien decoder ring, you know, science, it demands we try nature first. It's like a good detective story. You explore all the natural possibilities. So, hypothesis A, a hydrogen iceberg. A University of Chicago model suggests interstellar space can birth massive chunks of frozen H2. 
When cosmic rays pierce them, they warm and outgas pure hydrogen. An invisible propellant, you know, something that wouldn't necessarily show a visible tail. Hypothesis B, a nitrogen iceberg. We've seen kilometer-wide bodies of solid N2 in the outer solar system. Sunlight could sublimate nitrogen without releasing telltale dust. This could explain the lack of a prominent tail. Hypothesis C, the dark comet scenario. Perhaps 3i Atlas is coated in a carbon crust that plugs every vent until internal pressure ruptures a patch, releasing a short, faint tail we simply missed. Each of these ideas, you know, it solves part of the puzzle, but none of them fully explains the trajectory's razor-thin alignment to the ecliptic or the retrograde swing past multiple planets or the unusual chemical composition. And that, you know, that is where Avi Leb steps in. Avi Leb, he chairs Harvard's astronomy department. He's published with Stephen Hawking, and, you know, he calculates black hole futures for breakfast. In a preprint posted 3 March 2025, he argues that the simplest synthesis of all this data, all this evidence, is technology. Picture a light sail, thinner than aluminum foil, tens of kilometers wide, but weighing less than a car. Photons bounce off it, giving a continuous, gentle push. No tail required, you know, no outgassing needed. Loeb's math shows such a sail could naturally hover near the ecliptic if it was launched toward the sun to harvest gravity a reverse Oberth maneuver that steals momentum and flings the craft deeper into the galaxy. Now, why approach on the side opposite Earth? Loeb invokes the dark forest answer, you know, from the Fermi paradox. Any civilization that fears detection, it might park its probes where the locals' instruments are weakest. It's a very intriguing possibility. He even proposes a 0 to 10 techno scale, where 0 means it's a natural object, like a rock, and 10 means that it's a technological object that poses a potential threat to humanity. He places 3i Atlas at a tentative 3, possibly engineered, definitely worth a closer look, you know? Critics, of course, they call it storytelling, but Loeb, he calls it Bayesian statistics with an open mind, following the data where it leads. Now, of course, there's a lot of debate. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, for example, they released infrared data on 10 March showing a classic dusty coma. They list the nucleus at 5.6 kilometers, not 20, and say any non-gravitational acceleration is consistent with sublimating water. But, you know, as I mentioned, water makes only 4% of that cloud of gas. Caltech's Mike Braun tweeted, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary clickbait. Columbia's David Kipping calculates the probability of ecliptic alignment for any 10-year window at 1.3%. Low, he says, but not lottery level. The European journal Astronomy and Astrophysics declined to review Loeb's paper, citing insufficient quantitative novelty. Translation, show us a blinking thruster or recalibrate. Loeb counters that dismissing anomalies just because they're inconvenient is the same geocentric arrogance that laughed at meteors in 1800 and at exoplanets in 1980. You know, science uh, is an opportunity to learn something new, so we shouldn't uh, always behave like the adults in the room that know the answer in advance. It's, it's an opportunity to maintain your childhood curiosity. The standoff is less about data, really, than about epistemology. How curious, how open-minded should science allow itself to be? Here's the practical bit, you know, why this is important. If 3i Atlas is natural, it's still a Rosetta Stone, a pristine sample of planet-building material from an alien system. That would be interesting because you learn about what makes the backyard of other stars, you know, other types of rocks. And we might learn about what is the composition of that rock. Maybe it has the building blocks of life on it, if we can bring some material to Earth. But if it's technological, we may be witnessing the first confirmed artifact of another intelligence. And if it ends up being technological, we will know that not only there is life out there, but intelligent life. And, and that is very exciting. Either answer, you know, it rewrites textbooks. 
Loeb's Galileo project is already building software that will piggyback on the Vera Rubin Observatory, set to begin its 10-year survey in 2026. Every 30 seconds, Rubin will photograph the entire southern sky. Machine learning filters will flag anything that deviates from Keplerian motion. The goal, you know, is to catch the next 3i atlas months before it reaches perihelion, time enough to launch a CubeSat swarm, maybe even knock off a flake for isotopic tasting. And, you know, we have the ability to search for such objects. There is a new telescope in Chile called the Rubin Observatory. It was just inaugurated, and it will potentially find a new interstellar object of this type every few months. And that would be amazing. Policy wonks are dusting off contingency plans drafted during Oumuamua's visit. Protocols that range from do nothing to laser ranging for Morse code pings. The stakes are no longer academic, you know. Congress quietly added $20 million to NASA's 2026 budget line for rapid response interstellar object characterization. The comet versus probe debate is shaping planetary defense, space law, and even insurance underwriting for satellites. You know, if there is a technological object that we identify, it will obviously change the way we behave in the future. We will need to deploy, you know, a network of interceptors or sensors that would alert us to threats in the future. So, do you buy Loeb's logic or the mainstream coma story? Drop your odds, alien 20%? zero down in the comments smash that subscribe button if you want more videos that treat fringe ideas with real peer-reviewed rigor and hey share this with a friend who still thinks we're alone statistics just got interesting you know we started with a smudge on a ccd and ended with a civilization level question are we being scouted Right now, 3i Atlas is hurtling back toward the big empty, its surface possibly glinting with starlight or with engineered alloys we don't yet know how to classify. The data we collect in the next 18 months, its exact light curve, any radio whisper, the isotopic ratio of that wisp of dust, you know, the high-resolution images we get from Mars and Jupiter will either cement A.V. Loeb's reputation as the Copernicus of the 21st century or add another footnote to the long list of cosmic false alarms. You know, this is a blind date of interstellar proportions, meeting an object from outside the solar system that we've never seen before. And of course, if you go on a blind date, you don't know what to expect. And then, you know, when you go on a blind date, the fundamental question is, will the other side be friendly or a serial killer? You know, you never know. So, so we should always be cautious. Either way, the sky is no longer just a dome of stars. It's a neighborhood. And something, someone, may be already driving through. And if we find it, we might learn about new technologies, new science that we don't possess. It will change our perspective about our place in the universe, and it could inspire us. You know, if they are much more accomplished than we are, we might start to explore space much more meaningfully instead of investing most of our resources in conflicts on this rock that we were born on. Keep watching, keep asking, and remember, the universe doesn't care about our comfort zones.